Kevin, you have been associated with RTS for a couple of years now, but you've been an observer of RTS for mm -hmm. some time. Looking at RTS as a pastor of a church, where you, I mean, you're not an RTS graduate, uh, what looks different about RTS to you? Before I had any position with RTS, it was it was always a seminary I was trying to steer young men toward. And we, we all agree there are other really good Reformed evangelical seminaries and that can, can train up people for ministry. So it's not that we're the only people doing anything worthwhile. But, you know, the, the uniqueness and what always made me really excited to direct people here was that emphasis on both head and heart and pastor, scholar, they're, they're going to be academically challenged. So they're, they're not getting fluff. They're getting real meat and potatoes. But at the same time, they're getting it from practitioners, from people who are living this out, from people who have pastoral ministry experience, actually care about the students. And they're going to get it in a way that is self-consciously reformed without being, hmm, what's the, crunchy about it, <laughs> without being fussy about it. So we're, we're glad to be reformed. We don't, we're not apologizing for that. And we'll tell you the distinctives and the important angularity of it. And yet we're not trying to throw elbows just to throw elbows. So I, I think that spirit of RTS coupled with the academic excellence and pastoral integrity is really what I've, I, I, I've seen here. You know, I, one distinctive of RTS is a real robust commitment to biblical inerrancy. You know, there are a lot of evangelical institutions that talk about evangelical, uh, that, that talk about biblical inerrancy and they kind of have their fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, if you look down in the small print, yeah. there are some things that you go, okay, now hold on, I thought you, thought yeah. you held a, there's, yeah, there's no right. fingers crossed on biblical inerrancy. This, right. this institution came into being because of biblical inerrancy. So it's a big deal for us. And, and you will, you will hear um, a, a full, biblical, robust case being made mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the inerrancy the authority, the infallibility, the inspiration of Scripture in every classroom here. And so I, I think that's one thing I would say. I think the other thing, you've already touched on it, is Reformed theology. We, we are serious about Reformed theology. And we've got half of our students come from non-Reformed backgrounds and non-Reformed churches and denominations. But all of our faculty is coming from a Reformed perspective. We're committed to the Westminster Confession of Faith. And we actually think we can serve all of our students better by coming from a consistent confessional perspective. Even our students that are coming from non-Reformed positions. I think they'll understand Reformed theology better and they'll understand their own theology better wherever they end up. Another thing that's unique about RTS is from the very beginning, we have seen the Great Commission as something that we wanted to uh, build into the DNA of students so that we're, we're not interned, in, sort of inwardly focused, navel gate. No, we're, we're out, we want to see evangelism, discipleship, apologetics, missions done by the pastors and the, and the leaders of the Christian church and by the churches and by the paraministries in this generation. We want, to, we want to feed in people with a high view of Scripture, a high view of God, a high view of grace, but their, their eyes are focused on the mission to which Jesus is calling them. Well, I'll add to that. I think those three things are the three things that actually make RTS appealing to people who are not inside the center of our traditional circle. Right. You know, we, we talk a lot about the, the multi-denominational impact of RTS and how we're not linked to a single denomination and serve many denominations. And at most campuses, we have well over 40 to different denominations represented. But I think that's the reason. People look at RTS and they think, Okay, even if I'm not quite there on some Reformed theology issues, I see the foundation of Scripture there. I see a winsome ethos. I see an evangelistic outward orientation. And one of the things I love about what I see here in Charlotte, and that's the, the thing that I see most aptly and most immediately, is that that outward-oriented ethos uh, is embodied by the fact that so many of our students are on the mission field. Yes. Um, yes. I, I can't tell you how many of our students, for whatever providential reasons here, have found themselves overseas in South America and various places all over the world proclaiming the gospel in a very uh, plain church planning evangelistic context. And that just, just bears out what you've just said, which is that we're not just tr training these men and women to, to, as you said, be smarter than everyone else, but rather to take solid biblical truth and see it proclaimed at the ends of the earth. One of our little speeches at RTS is, is that our people are our curriculum. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I do think we've got a, a better curriculum out there than, mm. 
than you'll find anywhere else. But our, our professors are the curriculum, and you know, it's not just the, the classes that you're taking, it's the people that you're taking it from. And these are people who embody who we are and what we're trying to do. And I want to see a life poured into students. And it's the character, the commitments, uh, the, the passions of those professors Often that have embodied outside the classroom. Yes, yes. Have taken yeah. hold of the lives yeah. of students for mm -hmm. the for the good. Right. And that's what we want to see.